So ever since the beginning of capitalism, corporations have been corporations with unfair um, rules to their employees, unfair things, unhealthy poison that they've been putting out to the public, uh, knowingly or unknowingly, just because it's not illegal, and also um, basically scrubbing every money and squeezing the juice out of every citizen and employee that ever works for them or buys from them. But today I want to talk about something very specific that's going on in a brand newly legalized uh, substance, which is cannabis. You might have guessed based on my channel. I am Cannabis Express 420. We talk all things cannabis here. Today we're going to be talking about pesticide in um, corporate dispensary medical product. Uh, which is an important topic to talk about. And if you want to get more information on cannabis, talk about growing the industry, all that good stuff. We talk all things cannabis here. If you have any suggestions, leave them down below. Also, while you're down there, hit the subscribe button and hit the like button if you end up liking this video. But today I wanna to talk about something a little bit specific and gloss over it. And then I wanna talk about how the industry is going to be impacted by this issue. Now. We went over a couple days in stream, a, a couple days ago in stream, we went over um, pesticides being used in cannabis product and how it's been affecting people who buy from them and people who actually administer their product. Now, the, the sketchy thing about um, cannabis cultivation, which I didn't know, is that there are no real laws about what pesticides you can use specifically for cannabis. And uh, th th this is all a legend, by the way. I'm not a legal expert. This is all a legend, but source from the article that we're going to be going over from the uh, stream clips that I show in a minute. Um, basically what's going on is pesticides are being used on cannabis that should not be used and are banned for cultivating other plants. Now why this is important is that there is no threshold for what is dangerous when it comes to pesticides in cannabis. Now, if you don't know, pesticides are legitimate poison. Now, they're a, a small poison that's meant to kill small bugs and insects and, and small rodents and all that good stuff. However, they can also be poisonous to humans in certain dosages. And in Washington, these people did an independent study. They bought like 40 cannabis products ranging from flour and extract and uh, pens and all that good stuff. They did some testing and uh, I think it was 33 of the samples came back with what they would consider high amounts of dangerous slash um, unwarranted levels of pesticide. And if you have been cultivating cannabis for any amount of time, you will know one, that you can do all these things naturally without actual poison. Uh, you can use essential oils and all that good stuff to actually get the pests to leave your plants alone in the first place. And you can also do things uh, to just otherwise avoid pests being in there without using poison. It's very crazy. One of the people they talked about actually kind of broke my heart, got me a little rattled, uh, got me shooken up and, and, and a little red in my boots is they were um, talking about a, a cancer patient that they had using medical medicinal marijuana supplies to actually treat the symptoms of her cancer and she ended up getting, getting poisoned from the pesticide. And they're saying that it's an industry-wide issue. And the reason I believe that's absolutely true in my opinion allegedly is um it, it's that when these big black and suit and tie corporations come in here and buy up dispensaries or just get into it for the money they they have been listening to the hippie community they have been listening to the cannabis community they've been eavesdropping on us because they knew that business opportunity was going to come up and i i i believe that they got the impression that this was somehow going to be like an infinite money glitch that they could take advantage of, make piss poor product and shill it out. And I think the big reason uh, that is, is because when it comes to cannabis, we treat it a lot like alcohol. We treat it a lot like candy. We treat it a lot like something casual that you can just buy from the convenience store, Tylenol. Um, um, not, uh, not obviously in the availability, like there's still laws of like how you can get it, like being 21 plus, uh, recreational medical, all that good stuff. There's roadblocks into getting the product, but, but the way we treat it mentally, it's a very casual and well liked thing for the most part. And I think the big corporation guys who don't know anything about cannabis swooped in, saw an opportunity to sell shit product that's dangerous 
to people who are under the impression that they're using a medicine. And, and let me tell you, man, that pisses me off. But I just wanted to get in here, gloss over it a little bit, tell you guys what's going on, and, and now I want to show you guys the uh, stream clip where we actually went over it. Also, shout out to insurance, fucking scam, and um, college, fucking scam. Sketchy pesticides practice practices in the pot industry uh, predate legalization and old habits die hard. Setting up a system zero tolerance encourages cheaters and bureau to a new leaf em wow enterprise. Uh, one early victim of the abridgment of the le state's legal pesticides enforcement system argues if at all or nothing and you're about to lose your lose a crop why not risk it all yeah that's a good point um turns out um old boris was on to something zero tolerance systems like the one we've set up for legal cannabis uh come with a need for re robust enforcement uh the wslcb has been in theory uh, deterring growers from continuing to use banned substances, offering stiff penalties uh, for anyone caught doing so. However, um, the stick was apparently more of a finger wag uh, while they did catch a fine or two of state's largest growers for using pesticides. It wasn't necessarily due to the proactive investigation. Both just came from anonymous tips. So they don't do shit. They don't actually do anything when they find people doing these things. They just kind of say, hey, um, if you're willing to pay your way through because someone exposed you for doing something gross, uh, just give us the $20,000 and uh, you can uh, be on your way. You can uh, keep doing that business. Just give us our fucking cut. Which is a big pattern you see in the uh, U.S. economic system constantly. Uh, prior to that, the W. Lulus, um busted a weird old hippie on the peninsula for using a spinosad. Using spinosad. Uh, a relatively minor offender and uncovered some startling revelations about his nude jaunts during the CCA and patients um, for patients said she paid 1600 out of pocket for a conductor um, her to share of testing when she realized that many of her patients were already shopping in recreational stores that's fucking insane yeah you're welcome man uh this this stream i'm dedicating literally just looking into cannabis drama and also answering all of chat's questions uh, so anyone who wants to hop in and ask any question is more than welcome to while I go through and read about these sketchy business practices um, that dispensaries are pulling off. Okay, I'm going to read this sentence again because I totally murdered it. She said she paid $1,600 out of pocket to conduct her share of testing. Uh, when she realized that many of her patients were already shopping in recreational stores, uh, she paid for 11 of the 37 tests. The patients can't afford the products that are not on the shelf right now. Uh, she said they're so, so they're going to be forced to buy what's affordable, and that may not be the product that's been tested for pesticides. It also may not be a product they should use it might not even be a product they need um the, the the products that someone might need might not be affordable but they might not know that because we can't really discuss medical stuff unless they have a prescription uh which if you're shopping for medical you already do but even then i think they have to tiptoe around a lot of the effects that the plant can actually give off simply because of its um legal status federally i think that's how that works i could be dumb but i know they can't talk about it to uh, recreational patients 
Uh, she was especially dismayed that one concentrate product rang in at over 200,000 parts per billion of a microbiogen. Okay, mycobidinol. Mycobidinol? Uh, because she obtained the sample from a cancer patient, a particularly vulnerable customer. Yeah, that shit is fucking horrifying. You're selling smokable poison um, to cancer patients. That's called being fucking Satan. And they're knowingly spraying their plants with this shit because it's strictly banned a lot of the stuff they're using. Like, again, if they were using, like, tea tree oil or peppermint oil or rosemary oil, uh, maybe even neem oil uh, in the veg stage at least, they wouldn't be having a problem. But the fact that they're using, like, actual fucking poison, scary. As you can see from the results she wrote, uh, the cancer patient that I mentioned has been poisoned. I cannot sit idly by. I have a heart and a conscience. <sighs> what the fuck, man? This, this cancer patient went out to seek medication. And instead of getting medicated, instead of being relieved of their pain, which they might have been relieved of their pain a little bit, but you also poisoned them with a fucking pesticide that you weren't even supposed to use. What the hell are these people doing? Uh, the first reform that needs to be made is institute randomized pesticide testing, conduct the WSLCB uh, or independent third party regulations that have no teeth aren't worth the paper uh, they're printed on. Then we need to establish their own state-level pesticide thresholds so that we can put those results at some point, uh, some sort of meaningful context, and sort out the incidental contact from the intentional spraying. Yeah, no fucking joke, dude. Something needs to be done for real.